I'm going to show you now how to make this pin cushion with an attached waist basket. This makes a great gift for your quilting friends. Um, it's a great fundraiser. Uh, it has some nice features, some uh, rubberized backing to grip the table. There's some magnets, sheets in, in these petals. Um, we've got the bag so that it has form to stay open is really helpful. <clears throat> so we're going to have fun with this. Okay, so you make the bag, cut out the pattern, and the pattern has these little corners. There will be two of these for the lining and two for the outside of the bag. Sew the side, both sides, and across here, the middle, bottom. And then you open up the little corners that are whacked out of it and match the seam to seam and sew across and that will give you this bag form like that. Then you are going to slide so that the wrong sides together slide the lining down into the, uh, the bag, outside of the bag. <clears throat> Now, for the top edge, the dimensions are in the pattern. You're going to uh, sew it together end to end, and you've, we've cut batting that's one inch wider because we want it a little more stuffed. Then um, we're going to roll. You can pin the batting along this upper edge to hold it. That kind of is helpful. And then you're going to roll the batting up inside like this. And then bring wrong sides together. Do that all the way around. So there's just one layer of batting that should be in the seam, not two. The rest is is rolled up inside and that's what's going to give you this nice form for the outside of the bag. <clears throat> then once you've done that you're going to put the bag. I've gathered a little bit here in the front of the bag. You're going to put the edges inside so that this will roll up over be tacked down and and face it'll be a facing so that this raw edge is covered now before I rolled I made this little bridge sewed it into the seam so that when this rolls over tacks on there that see and then the little bridge is attached here under the wing under the uh, petal next we'll show you how to make the different pin cushions that go with this bag. For the different flowers, for the base of the pin cushion, you're going to Xerox your pattern, put it on top of two pieces of fabric right side together, and thin polyester bonded batting. Then you're going to sew on the outside solid line, cut on the outside dash line. Now if it's a gathered flower, um, like this part, you're going to cut all the way through this uh, dash line and then turn it, take your paper out, turn it right side out, press it and then you're going to hand gather pretty wide. Here now what I've done is I've done a stitch here and a stitch here and on each petal it's uniform so when I pull it together I get a little indentation in the middle of each petal and I, I like that. But now, if it's not a gathered, then I only cut the um, fabric. And that way, when I put this flower on top, I'm not going to have any raw edges showing here. This will show, but I'll put the rubberized. I'll glue this here, so that won't show. And once I've got it to this point, I will put my magnet, this is just a magnet sheet, and I'll put it inside 
here. Each petal just go around. And that's just a really fun feature to catch your needles and things. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Sheets are, uh, sheet will do two of these and it costs maybe $250 or something. So there is no very expensive to put the magnets in. Now you don't want to put the magnets under batting because they're not that strong the magnets. In fact, if you can put the magnets, so make sure it's right on the fabric, like if you've got seam allowance and the magnet gets underneath there, it'll hold it up. The fabric won't be as strong. Okay, and then this, well, and the magnets will be on the wrong side, won't they? I might need to slit here, put the magnets underneath the batting so that when I put this on the bottom, the magnets will be on the top. That's what I'll have to do. Okay, so this is our little frog I'm working on, so let's show you the frog. You begin by making the little eyes, copy your pattern, and I've got white and then the frog fabric and put right sides together and thin polyester bonded batting. Now I want to make an eyelid, so I've got this fabric folded wrong sides together and here's a little design line. I'm going to line that fold right up with that lid line. Then I'm going to sew on that outside solid line and cut on the outside dash line. Take the paper out and when I turn it right side out I've got this really cool eyelid and that eye. Really fun. Then I will cut a um, little felt circles for the iris and the pupil. It gets a little tiny, but you can you can turn them. They're not that hard to turn. Get your finger in there. Turn it. Maybe use a pencil. There we go. Oh, well, trust me. You can do it. Okay, so here's our cute little eyelid. And here's our little felt iris and pupil. I just whip stitch those on with matching. And look how this green isn't exactly matching, but it gives it nice lines. Okay, now let's put his little body together. So pre-make his mouth. Again, I've just put the paper pattern on top of two pieces of fabric right side together. I didn't put batting in this. You could if you want. And it was just sewn across the top and cut on the dash line and turn it like that. And that's his little mouth. Okay, now I've put his mouth, just put it right on top of one of the sections that I've cut out. There are four sections. Now I'm going to lay his eyes right here. Um, so say this is turned, it's not turned. It'd be all turned. Place one here and one here. And then pin those to secure them. Now I'm going to sew two together like that, put it along the edge. Actually, before I do that, I put another, you know, blank one here. Of course, you can't, so you're catching your eye and your mouth. Sew along here, and then I've got two more sewn together like this, and then just put them like that. So up and around, and that's where you get this little guy. See how the mouth's in there. And I'm going to hand gather the bottom like that. And we'll show you how to fill this right now. So you can go to any pet store, PetSmart that carries uh, bird stuff. And this is a uh, it's, called, it's a bird litter, but it's a walnut crushed shells. They're great. They're clean. They used to put in the bottom of the bird cage, but these are clean. They're just a brushed uh, or crushed walnut shell, and they're perfect for pin cushions. You, really, they're the only way to go. Your batting, if you were to stuff this with batting, just wouldn't hold your pins. So here, just fill it. And it might make a mess. You might want to use a funnel. But the trick with this is to fill it absolutely as full as you can and I'm going to do that and and then I'll come back and show you how to close it okay so here I filled it 
I've got it hand gathered and I'm going to try to push it into the edges so that he won't be have so many gathers uh, on his little bottom. Okay, now as I pull this tight, ooh, looks like I've got too much in there. So I'm going to dump a little out, kind of tweak it here. There we go. Now is it going to close? It's not going to close. We'll dump some more. No real science to this. Kind of whatever. We'll get that opening closed and we're almost there. Let's dump just a little bit more. Here we go. Pull. Now we've got it, I think. If we kind of Push that around into the cracks. Pull it. Pull it. Now, I'm going to go and stitch across just to tighten that down and make sure that we just don't have anything leaking out. And I might thread just a whole nother needle and just really secure that in there tight. Make sure. Okay, there is our cute little frog. Oh my gosh, he's just so cute. Okay, and I've got <clears throat> this done. I'm going to just use a fabric glue and glue this here. I might work to make sure the little gathers are even. Glue it. Glue the bottom of my frog. Now look! The flower's not showing as much. Okay, so let's widen this hole. We want more of that flower to show. So just have fun with it. There. Now, do I like that better? I like that better. There we go. Glue that down. Let it dry. Use lots of glue. And then I'll put my little rubberized... Oh, well, I, I'm going to have to sew my bridge on there first for my garbage, for my little waste bag. But there we go, there's our frog. Isn't he cute? Oh, he's so fun to do. He's just a riot to do. Okay, we'll show you the apple next. Now to make the apple again, I've copied my pattern, put it on top of you know, stacks of fabric. You've got them all at once. This is for like doing two of them. So if you're gonna mass produce them for a fundraiser, it's great, you just cut them all out. Now the apple has a little opening at the top here, a little bite out of here. So when I put, I'm going to put two sections again at a time and then put those two sections together. I'm going to have a little opening here. And um, I'm going to gather that opening. I've just cut a stick from a tree outside a little branch. And what I'm going to do is coat this branch with glue and then gather it and then slide that glue right down on that fabric so it's down there tight and really is tight. I. Take, took the thread, wrapped it around as well. So there's nothing going to leak out of that. Now that doesn't look very finished. So I'm just going to take a little bit of raffia, wrap it right around, just wrap it right around there. I might glue that down too, or stitch it. Tie just a tiny bow. You don't want a big bow because it'll interfere with your pins, your function of the pin cushion. And then um, I will make these little leaves. Put the pattern on top of two pieces of fabric right side together in thin polyester bond and batting. Sew on the solid line, cut on the outside dash line. Then I cut through one layer of fabric on the back and turned it. And then of course I whip stitched that, did my little veins, top stitch my veins. And then once this is stuffed, my little raffia, I'm just going to glue my little leaves down. And this is just an adorable pin cushion. I've got you know, you find the cute fabrics that, this is just gonna look classy when it's done. I have um, a, uh, again, I've I've done this where I've uh, cut one layer. Now I might slit through that batting and slide my magnets so that they're gonna be on this top part. And then once this is stuffed and gathered on the bottom, gathered it, it's gonna go here. This is just going to be a classy, classy looking little pin cushion. So have fun with that. I, I think you're going to enjoy these. Yeah, they have a lot of parts. They're a little bit involved, but nothing's hard. 
and they just make adorable gifts and um, great idea for for you. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs>